on what I've seen, what I've seen her become mm. in the process of this divorce. Damn. That neither one of y'all should never ever experience in your life. Mm. Do you think you did anything wrong? Absolutely. But uh, you didn't cheat. Me, me and my wife, ex-wife, saying. woke up to the news on September 11th that I abused my daughter because I spanked her with my right hand on top of her butt, directly on top of her pants. Second time I ever spanked her in my life. And then that's when all that shit went down. So me and my wife, we was up there with the Care Bears. We had no problem. Everything about our vibe and energy, chemistry and magic, it was all everything that I had prayed. I was experiencing an answered prayer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I was going to get married and be married for the rest of my life. Like, I literally convinced myself, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be gray and old, and I'm going to have to eat mashed potatoes and coleslaw because all these teeth going to be gone. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be married that long. Mm-hmm. Like, I was in it. And so for my whole thing, to just kind of happen the way it happened. And I was in Jersey filming uh, with John Malkovich. And as the arguments and the disagreements happened, which actually happened from me shooting two music videos, and one of them featured her, did it with Rick Ross called Black Excellence. Mm. So she said, your family don't matter. We ain't been having sex. You ain't giving me no attention, no energy. And I just said, I'm... I'm so sorry. We were just in quarantine for 10 straight months. There was not a flight, a call, an email. There was nothing going on in the world. The whole world shut down. It was 24 hours, seven days a week, us. And I knew, and she knew, because we talked about it, God literally pressed that pause button on the world, Mm -hmm. but specifically the pause button Mm -hmm. on our marriage, because we needed time to reconnect Mm -hmm. after the devil came in to try and create a level of disconnection in our marriage that most marriages wouldn't be able to survive, especially only a year in. Yeah. We're one, we're married for a year. We wake up to accusation from my ex. Who the fuck has survived that? Mm. Who wants to get to know, what should we do? How do we do? It's like, uh, we just met. Mm. We are in a honeymoon <laughs> phase and we woke up to that. So fast forward, now you accusing me of shit and mm-hmm. putting it in court documents as if you forgot what it was like to wake up and to someone putting that. shit in court documents is not true. Mm-hmm. So I don't know who she is. I don't know who she became. I realized that this was a woman that was very simple who I met in a $12 sundress and prided herself on being simple. And I don't care right. about money, stars, celebrities. I don't need to live and be around. This is not, I'm a simple girl. Mm-hmm. Now you want $20,000 a month for a one-year-old. Mm. Now you've hired three law firms to try and knock my motherfucking head off. My prenup, my prenuptial agreement mm. was so detailed and so extensive. My lawyer whispered, she had her own lawyer to negotiate on her behalf. Mm. My lawyer, Tanya Mitchell Graham said to me, I can't believe you got her to sign this. Mm. And I said, well, the reason I got her to sign it is because she said to me specifically, this ain't mine. Mm. That's your publishing. That was your cause, it's your house. Mm. And if we ever separated because <laughs> I didn't get in this for any of that, I will sign every piece of paperwork that reflects that I don't want none of that. Mm. To then want nothing more than to show a nigga that that's all she wants. Mm. But the prenup should be ironclad, right? Right. Yeah. They are doing everything it takes to crack the mother. Mm. And it's now three years <clears throat> into trying to crack. See, you have a pre-nuptial. Mm. Be prior to mm. the nuptials. Mm. Let's establish. And then you got people who will do a post-nuptial. We already got married. Let's do the paperwork after we get married because we need to make sure that uh. since the money didn't showed up all of a sudden and a lot of successes have Let's put a post-nuptial in play. We ain't even really have no reason to do a prenup. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, she's trying to crack the prenup, mm. <clears throat> trying to get $20,000 a month for a one-year-old, which Baby. is my daughter is now yeah. four. 
And so I have no idea who this person is. That so, doesn't mean she never loved you. That's a definite part of it. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, How would oh. you feel, Jess? Okay. Well, let's, let's talk person, about I had a child, and then you hear your ex, he, you, she, she, he, you never loved him. I mean, that's the name of the song. That would yeah. definitely not be true. I mean, that that's why I asked him, did he see any red flags? I felt like you never felt like she really, really loved you. Like at one I point, never said that. Really, okay. You asked me, did you? You never think none of it was genuine up until, I guess. Be honest. <clears throat> you did say that. Was any of it genuine? The, the name of the song is I Don't Think You Ever Loved yeah, Me. Yeah, I don't think you ever. So you were sitting in the courtroom. And I also was sitting in the courtroom. And I said, as they're unpacking tax returns and mm -hmm. getting into all this shit, and they trying to Love unpack, I'm like, she just sitting there like this, like, yeah. And I'm like, damn, can you look at me? Right. Can you like, yeah, your lawyer is Emotional. so nasty in this courtroom. Can you like, it's like a sociopath. Like I'm feeling, I don't feel nothing mm. for this person. So I never, I would never disrespect her and mm -hmm. say, I don't think. At no point did she ever love me. Right. But there is no aspect of me right now with all that I've seen and heard mm -hmm. and all this shit that's going on in this paperwork and what happened in that courtroom, I can say, I did nothing to you mm -hmm. to create that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Like, you should be able to say physical violence, I got three chicks pregnant on the side mm -hmm. and love child and I, I was on the road and smashing chicks on like what what did I do that made you become that cheating so, is not the only thing that could land you in a divorce um, well, how many niggas you know that's <clears throat> raising somebody else's child that their husband had behind their back it happens every day right that's right. when you when you committed to the duration you said I don't like this but I know that my husband has so much more potential mm. beyond the mistake that was made. So at the end of the day, I can't disown the laughter, the travel, the moments and all that we yeah. had. That would be, you know, that's like evil mm -hmm. <laughs> to like act as if I didn't feel or I didn't feel that she felt mm -hmm. something. But I have no idea who this person is. Mm -hmm. And none of her friends recognize her either. Mm -hmm. So... When y'all come at me on my timeline, not y'all, I'm talking about social media, I want y'all to understand something. Women have done an incredible job of normalizing, talking about their feelings, hurts, and vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. When a man does it, we get shamed in the silence. Yo, yo, shut the fuck up, man. Like, right. don't be putting your shit all out there. Motherfucker, if somebody had gave Mary J. Blige that advice to not be putting all her shit out there, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have Mary J. Blige. Right. Yeah. But I will say this, though. All of the women out here that's basically running all the charts in R&B are mm -hmm. all talking shit, in most cases, about men yeah. cheating, lying, yeah. and yeah. whatever the yeah. fuck yeah. is yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm a man. I know I'm an alpha male. Mm -hmm. So when I speak up on my shit, my truth, what I feel, what I've experienced... And she's allowed to feel whatever she feels. Because yeah. she's been at a nigga for two years on her podcast. You should. I'm just now speaking. Mm -hmm. So should. now I'm misogynistic. Yeah. Now I'm stalking. Now I'm abused. Mm -hmm. Now why? Well, you're in a brand new relationship, man. Why you keep talking about, first of all, making reference mm -hmm. to feelings that I'm still trying to emotionally navigate through mm -hmm. from a marriage that just blew up in my face yeah. doesn't mean that I want her or desire her. Right. It just means that I'm still bleeding out loud. Right. Yeah, but I don't artist. think it's the music, though. I don't think it's the music. See, what, where I usually, what, my question to you was, a lot of the stuff that, that Sam says, and Charlamagne tells me this all the time, a lot of stuff that she says, nobody hears. Yeah, you know I, didn't, they hear? I didn't know nothing about nothing. They hear it when you say it. They hear it when you leave a comment about it. We, I don't hear nothing that she says. I don't hear none of the podcasts. We don't get none of that information. What yeah. I tell NB all the time is that a lot of times things are bigger in our minds than they are actually in, yeah. in the world. Of like, like, I agree with that. The music, yes, we love the music. Put mm -hmm. it in the music. Like the post that you did the other day that you, I was looking for, that you took down, mm -hmm. that's what I was looking for. I want to see you do the Mary J. I Blige didn't thing. see that. I only seen it when you said it. But I love the Mary J. Blige thing. Like you said, like, put it in the music. Is yeah. that why you dressed like her yeah. um, from the Not Going Cry video? That's oh, not shit. what oh, he, man. no, that's not what he had on. Remember Kevin Hart was talking about? He looked like a Black Panther. Special. He did not look like Mary J. Blige. 
No. We had on the beret. Kevin really Hart. Nice. With the boots. Yeah, the boots. Kevin Hart. Please just know that I definitely was hot as a motherfucker with everything that I was wearing. <laughs> Kevin Hart, I need you to know that that was the funniest <laughs> shit ever. Wow. I was honored that you included me in your stand-up special, but I was suffering, my nigga. How'd you cross your legs? Kevin Hart. How'd you cross your legs? No, listen. Listen. This is what niggas didn't know. The video that I did was CeeLo Green. Don't pull up that bitch ass. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, let me see. I got, I got worse pictures than that. Let me see that. Let me see. Let me see. I got worse pictures than that. Oh, classy. 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 He kept that shit on the whole time. Oh, my God. His will. His will. His will. His will. Is way more important than placating to me. It was 150 years ago. I know I'm not the only one committed to keeping it real. That you're going to stand in your later. truth. It may not be popular. Plane, know that it does come with opposition sometimes. Mm-hmm. But that's the enemy trying to shut you up. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. The Tell your truth. Chase purpose, family. Mm. Y'all, I don't know about you, but I've made a difficult decision in my life. Commitment to myself and God that I will be authentic, true to myself, no matter what comes from it. They the say, shame the devil, tell the truth, right? and, and that's exactly what your girl about to do. Hey man, you we live in a world today right that is so I'm caught up in their desire to be liked and to be popular that they forsake authenticity for a dollar or a platform for some daggone status. And your girl decided that I'm going to keep it real with you and trust God that whatever he wants to happen with my truth, that his plan, his will, is way more important than placating mere mortals. I know I'm not the only one committed to keeping it real. That you're going to stand in your truth that may not be popular. Know that it does come with opposition sometimes. But that's the enemy trying to shut you up. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. Tell your truth. Chase purpose, family. Y'all, I don't know about you, but I've made a pivotal decision in my life. Commitment to myself and God that I will be authentic, true to myself, no matter what comes from it. What they say, shame the devil, tell the truth. And that's exactly what your girl about to do. We live in a world today that is so caught up in their desire to be liked and to be popular that they forsake authenticity for a dollar, for a platform, for some daggone status. And your girl's decided that I'm going to keep it real with you and trust God that whatever he wants to happen with my truth, that his plan, his will is way more important than placating to man.